Ladies and gentlemen, not so long ago, someone came to me and said, Theo, I don't know where we are going, but it's going to be wonderful and strange. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I assume that person was referencing to life. <laughs> okay, uh, well, my dear friends, <laughs> I know where we are uh, going. Yes, uh, I'm pretty sure that we're going to die. Surprise. <laughs> so, obviously, there is nothing wonderful about dying, and surely it's not strange, as we're all going to be six feet on the ground. But frankly, I don't give a damn about this destination. What matters is the journey. It is a share of wonders and surprises that we cherish and create sense in our lives. And thankfully, we do not know how it will end. But it is the beauty and the cruelty of our lives. Indeed, life is quite an experience. I don't know for you, ladies and gentlemen, but there is no place or time I would rather be in than today. Uh, what, what? Yeah, I know, I know. At the moment, we're facing a mask of mad <coughs> situation. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I still find some pleasure on this good earth. Like, I don't know, the beauty of nature, the love between communities, but also the respect of our democracies. <coughs> Trump, <laughs> what a man. But um, honestly, if I'm only thinking about the end of the journey, there is no doubt I will end up in a lethargic state. Why would I want to do anything in my life knowing that it's going to end? And furthermore, that it might end prematurely, from old age, from an accident, or from a virus. I think it will be extremely difficult to find some sense in this life if we only think about its ending. I mean, if we go this way, <laughs> you might just want to stay in your room and listen to Born to Die every day and wait for your time to come. And yeah, maybe I should stop please myself or with other people, and maybe you people behind your screens doing whatever I don't want to know, uh, maybe you should stop it. I mean, why should you? <laughs> We're going to die. Thankfully, we do not all think this way. I'd like to share with you a little story, ladies and gentlemen, a sad and yet very funny story as it talks about my unique journey in the world of studies. So basically, I was a wonderful student until I was seven. Then it was a complete disaster. <laughs> I even repeated once. But eventually, eventually, I made it to a deck. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so I can repeat another time. Only this time, it costed 10,000 euros. And <laughs> Daddy wasn't laughing. No, he, he definitely wasn't. <clears throat> so maybe you're asking yourself, in any case, I ask myself, and a lot of times, Theodore, why in the world are you not moving your sorry butt? Why? Well, I couldn't find sense in what I was doing. I wasn't stimulated enough, and I desperately wanted to leave my country so I can discover a new one. So, in my second year, I decided to put everything in my power in order to get a student exchange in Australia. And I got it, mate. Yes, on this day, the 23rd of February, 2020, I was proudly waving at my father with my two luggages and shouting at the top of my lungs, see you in six months, oh man. <laughs> You probably know where we are going with the story, don't you? 
Yes, a pangolin decided otherwise, said that one mouth is largely enough. <laughs> I insist, ladies and gentlemen, this was supposed to be the time of my life. A beer in each end, the sun burning my white body, and... Oh, and the Australian people. Nah. I enjoyed every single moment I had in this country. So, seriously, do you really believe that if I knew all of this, I would have done it the same, just so I can come back to my country four weeks later with a damn sleeve mask on my face? If I'm sharing with you this story, it's just in order to illustrate how pathetic it is to anticipate your future. Of course, if I knew the end of the journey, it wouldn't make any sense to go in Australia. Of course. But there is another example that well illustrate the absurdity to anticipate your future. And it's the story of Robin Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a huge fan of cinema. I could talk about it for hours. One of the greatest means in order to share your ideas, your values, your passion, how you look at society in the first place. And one of the greatest in this art was Robin Williams. Nobody can make me laugh like this man or inspire me in order to use the right tone to convince people to make them laugh. And yeah, I could definitely feel the thrill he felt when he was interacting with his public. One of the best. And yet, this man who brought so much joy to millions of people took his own life because of the pain he had in his heart. I have no explanation regarding why he had to go this way. But I do have one question for you. Do you think that if Robin knew his destiny, we would have met Mrs. Doubtfire? The end of the journey is the same for everyone, my dears. And no idea regarding how or when it will happen. And yet, we must live. But one of the ways to be at peace with your death is to appreciate your time during this journey of life. And in order to do so, you must find sense in your life. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, I really want to say this. Please believe me, we're going to die. Yes, it's happening right now. You might not notice it, but your cells are taking good care of this for you, believe me. So why should you cry on something that is inevitable? Shouldn't it be better to first make peace with your death before finding sense in your life? For your life makes sense because of what you experience in it. And make no mistakes, ladies and gentlemen, our common journey is far from being over. Yes, at the moment, we are at <coughs> war with a virus, but tomorrow we'll have to face the climate change that will not only threaten our environment, but will also threaten life itself on Earth, which means impacting our entire civilization. And I'm not quite sure it will be that funny to have a barbecue at 30 degrees in December. Nah, nah. And also, we'll have to face the evolution of bio and info technology. And if you have any sort of interest in keeping your free will, you might want to take a closer look to those technologies that might know you better than yourself in the not too distant future. Question. How are we supposed to overcome those challenges if we don't have sense in our lives? Well, personally, there is a passion of mine that helped me find sense in my life. And this passion is Taekwondo. It's me. <laughs> uh, it's a Korean martial art that I've been practicing for 20 years. I've been a competitor, I represented my country, I know what it is to fight. But let me just point out something right away to you, ladies and gentlemen. 
I used to hate, hate hurting people. You, you, you do see the, the little issue here when the, one of the main aspects of Taekwondo is clearly kicking people in the face, thus obviously hurting them. So again, here we are, same problem I had at school. Didn't make any sense for me to go training, to eat properly, or to be serious in any case. So guess who shut up being too heavy and unprepared for 14 years? This little boy right here. Countless of times I got badly beaten by guys that were not necessarily better than me, but surely more accurate. They knew why they were fighting and it made sense for them. So obviously <laughs> they won. But one of the good things, should I say the great thing about Taekwondo, is the fact that it's not just a sport. It's an art of life. Which means my thought regarding competition and fighting changed given everything I have experienced in my life. So, yes, I learned, like, in this wonderful year of 2020 that we just went by, <laughs> that surely wasn't the best year of my life, but by far the most instructive. I learned that in a fight, you can't win by holding back or restraining your abilities. You have to engage. But like my trainer told me, not just the muscles, you have to engage with your soul. Because this is how I progress. This is how I learn. And it is exactly the same in your life. Believe me, I know I will eat many other kicks in the face. I know I will have my sorry butt on the ground again and again. But now I know that if I give enough time, passion, love and faith, I can find sense in anything I want to achieve. Believe me, the game is still on. It's defeat that got me here. So there is no way I'm going to stop now. And yeah, maybe you will ask me, sure, Theodore, yeah, 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 but what if you don't make it? Oh, well, even if I don't make it, I'll keep the faith. Because don't you agree that during this journey, some moments make it worth it? In a way, they make the journey worth to die for, don't they? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, before I go, I'd like to ask you one last little question. Would you like to live forever? Now, I'm, I'm really asking you this question. Would you like this life to go on for eternity? For me, <laughs> the answer is pretty simple. <laughs> Absolutely not. This would be the worst for me. Where would be the passion if I have 200 years to live? How many lives that I have cherished will leave me before my time comes? <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense for me. You see, I embrace this journey every morning because I do believe that sense in life is also about sharing, or at least trying to share. And yeah, maybe, maybe our sense in life isn't in the success of sharing, but in the attempt of trying. But hey, ladies and gentlemen, I'm only a little child of 23 years old. <laughs> it might be all nonsense, everything I just told you. It's clearly possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like a great man once told me, do not believe me. Do not. But, you know, just give it a try. Who knows? Might be worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for your listening. Take care of yourselves. Assez rêvé. <laughs>